Morning. Pastor Sutton here at Our Savior Lutheran. I'm glad you're joining me this morning for our morning devotions on uh, April 10th, 2020, in the middle of our COVID-19 pandemic on Good Friday. Um, Luther said that the German people are so greatly blessed uh, because the word that they use for good and the word that they use for God are, are so similar uh, that when they express things are good, they use the name of God to say they are good. And of course, when, when God created the heavens and the earth during the days of creation, when he completed each day, he looked upon them and said it was good. And of course, we fell into sin and destroyed that. And yet we maintain, even in English, right? Even in English, the word for uh, God is one letter short of good. Um, so as we, as we consider God's Friday or Good Friday, the day on which Jesus our Lord is crucified, let's think about how good it is that we have a Savior. Um, we will we will proceed this morning uh, with our our daily prayer devotion as we have daily prayer for individuals and families in the in the hymnal. Um, if you don't have a hymnal um, at the church here, I have printed out some copies that CPH made available of this order of devotion. Um, and so if you if you call, I can mail them out to you. Or, or comment here in the pages. Um, probably better you call to send me your address if you're not a, a member of the congregation. Uh, if you're a member of the congregation, you can comment and I will mail one out to you. Um, and then you'd have this to follow along. I mean, it's not a lot, but there's the the prayers and so forth. So you would have that available. In the, and it's not just morning, but there's one for noon and, and, uh, and evening and, and uh, before bed as well. And so there's the close of the day, there's, there's uh, all the orders are available in there. Um, so. so this morning we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today will be the, the 25th psalm. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right. He teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. His soul shall abide in well-being, and his offspring shall inherit the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he makes known to them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged, 
bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my trouble, and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes, and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my soul and deliver me. Let, not, let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all his troubles. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our uh, reading today will be from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter, beginning at, at the verse 54. This is the deni denial of Peter. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And later someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them? But Peter said, Man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peter's denial of Jesus. It's a, a sad moment for Peter. Uh, he is... He is caught in his own sinful human nature. Not in the same way as Judas was caught. Judas was caught up in his sinful nature by Satan. And, and as such, he was taken over by Satan and betrayed the Lord. Peter's denial betrays himself, not the Lord. Peter comes into the, into the area, the, the household of of the high priest was a busy place. The, the troops had been sent out to collect Jesus, and then they bring him back. A, a fire is stoked to size in the middle of the room to heat the room and to give light to the proceedings. Peter is allowed admission to that, and a servant woman, a, a, a maid on the side, says, not to Peter, but to the people around her. Oh, this, this guy's one of those followers of this guy. He's, he's also one of this man's disciples. I'm not. Peter denies to the crowd who he is. A while later, another man points to him saying, are you not also one of them? And Peter denies the Lord a second time. The first time he denies knowing the Lord, the second time he denies being a disciple and a follower of Christ, and the third time he denies even being a Galilean. There's a little bit of that in us too, right? We get, we get in a crowd of friends. They're doing things that the world approves us of, but the Lord probably would not. And instead of denying those actions or putting them off, we say, I, I do not know the man. And we allow sin to seep into our lives. It, it's in our nature. Is it okay? No. No. Does it happen? Yes. This is the reason that Christ is crucified. This is the reason that his blood has to be shed upon the cross. This is the reason that he had to die for you. The crowds will gather today. having followed the judgment of, of uh, the high priest and of Herod, and Pilate finally having washed his hands of the whole situation, the crowds will gather. 
And they won't simply deny Jesus, but they will cry out, crucify him. They will call for his death, even as they call for the release of the murderer, the insidious prisoner, Barabbas, whose name, interesting, also means son of the father. And they will place Christ upon the cross this day. And there he will bleed. And there he will die. And they will take his body down and they will place it in the tomb. There our sins go to rest with him. Not forgotten by us, but forgiven by the Lord. When we confess our sins, we confess them to that tomb of Christ. When we go to the pastor for private confession and absolution, you speak your sins into the pastor's ear, which is the tomb of Christ. There your sins go to rest. There your sins go to die with Christ. And you are given new life in him. Which, interestingly enough, is why I chose in the small catechism today to look at confession. So what is confession? You know, my friends, a lot of people don't realize it, but in the in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, we still practice private confession and absolution. Oh, we don't call it that. We do in our catechism, but quite often when we simply say, I have to go talk to the pastor. But in our catechism, there still is confession. What is confession? It has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastor, as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it, our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. And what sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. That's why the Lord has given us confession. He's given us confession so that, so that we can bring our worries, our concerns, those sins like Peter's denial that, that bother us to him. In the congregation on Sunday morning, the absolution is given, but sometimes you don't feel, understand, truly believe that you have been forgiven. And so you come to the pastor for private confession and absolution. You confess your sins. The pastor lays his hand upon your head and reminds you that you are the forgiven of Christ. And that forgiveness, even as the sin is spoken into the pastor's ear, the tomb of Christ, that forgiveness flows out of that tomb and into your ear. The pastor places his hand upon your head and says, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then those sins are as far from you as the East is from the West. Let's continue with our prayer this day. Uh, we, I believe we continue with uh, the confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray that prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we pray this day for the preaching of the Holy Cross in time of persecution. Lord Jesus Christ, before whom all heaven and earth shall bow, grant courage that your children may confess your saving name in the face of any opposition from a world hostile to the gospel. 
Help them to remember your faithful people who sacrificed much, even facing death rather than dishonor you when called upon to defy the faith, deny the faith. By your spirit, strengthen them to be faithful and to confess you boldly, knowing that you will confess your own before the Father in heaven, with whom you and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And that little prayer which Luther gave us, I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil. All my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, of our Father, and God of all peace be with you on this Good Friday and Saturday as we go to rest and on Sunday as we expectantly await the resurrection of our Lord. God, God's peace, my friends, and you have a, a blessed day.